Nice. Okay. Okay. So just flip it in. had trouble with class registration so far since they've been here their college career. Okay, now those of you who have raised your hands, who has had trouble alone this semester? Okay, me too, because class registration is a struggle. It's like, shouldn't be a struggle, right? You'd think this would be the simplest thing. You just get up and go to your computer and you sign up for classes and it's done. However, it's not that simple. There are a lot of issues that go into class registration. So I'm going to dive into three different issues and topics that go into why class registration is a struggle. So the first one, time. So time is of the essence for college students. I mean, we're constantly balancing all of our time between when something is due for class or when we're going to class along with if you have a job. I mean, time is just constantly moving. In life and in college, it seems to move really, really fast. So it's kind of a waste of time to sit down and really think about things and know what your schedule is going to be like in the next semester when you're trying to finish up things for this semester. Along with time, it seems like that class registration comes at the worst time. The time when we're finishing up for finals, for like final exams and projects and everything else. I mean, it's just constantly moving and it's a waste of time to be thinking about class registration when we should be putting all our time into something like that. Um, next thing, moving on to stress. So for stress, um, class registration adds to a lot of our workload and leads to a lot of frustration, especially when a lot of your days and times don't move together and you have to sit down and really focus on it. That can be extremely stressful or really frustrating. And when it comes to major and minor classes, I mean, I think we've all been there when we're like, I don't know if this is exactly what I want to be doing. And so did you really have anybody to go talk to about that that would ask you, okay, well, what are you interested in? Maybe freshman year, but now that you're a sophomore, maybe question what you want to do. I mean, you don't really have, you have the option to go to someone, but it's not a regular sit-down meeting every semester that maybe it should be. So, and then along with stress, when we stress a lot, we start to overthink things. And when we overthink, we panic. And nobody should be panicking about class registration. Like I said, it should be the easiest, simplest thing, but we all seem to have some sort of issue that we stress about. So, and our final thing that we're discussing is energy. So, we already have so much energy being spanned out over so many different things, classes, and then tests, and projects, and schoolwork in general, and then that's just schoolwork, and then you involve your actual life. You know, you've got time and energy that you want to spend with friends and that you have to be doing in school. And if you're a mother or a father coming back to school, I mean, you're hardly having energy with your kids and with your family life. So it's a lot of wasted energy to be thinking about class registration and being like putting so much thought into it when it's really should be something that's just simple and easy like I had said before. Um, and it also creates a lot of negative energy. And at this time in the semester, I mean, there's already a lot of negative energy with people learning really low on sleep. And then if you add this on top, it can be really stressful. A personal thing that I found with class registration that was really hard for me to witness as a friend was a lot of people in my classes crying because they were like, my time ticket doesn't open until this time and all these people are filling up in this spot and I don't know what class to take now because that's one that's gone and I don't know where to look for classes, I don't know who to talk to about this and then emailing their professors and being frustrated and then there's also a waste of time in class when your time ticket does open. Then no, I've seen people registering for classes for the next semester while they're in class now. They're not putting energy into the teacher that they're paying for and the education that they're paying for because they're so focused on the future. It's not right here in the moment like it needs to be. It adds a lot of frustration, stress, all the above. So I'm going to add in a little excerpt here about why things are the way they are. So that'll probably be an extra slide. But as of right now, we're just going to dive into what can we do. 
So, let me take you back. You're a first semester freshman. You know, you're excited, you're walking around, you're trying to make new friends and all this stuff. Um, and then you're going to your classes and then you zip through your first semester and you come to the final. And you're stressing because you're like, oh my gosh, finals. This is my first huge finals exam, you know, first huge like finals time and all this stuff. Things you're not used to. But then you're also thinking, oh, class registration. What am I going to do about that? Well, thank God you're a first semester freshman because you've got an advisor that can help you. They sit you down. They ask you, how's your first semester going? How do you like your classes? Is there anything you want to take that's extra? Do you want to add a minor? They sit you, ask you all these questions, and walk you through a plan for your next semester. Great, right? Yeah. So then it comes to the next semester, and you think the same thing is going to happen. However, yeah, it just did. <laughs> OK. However, it, however, when it comes to your second semester as a freshman, this is no longer a thing that happens. It's an option to sit down with your advisor for maybe 20 minutes, but if their time allows for it, maybe 30 minutes, you know? But it's, not op it's an option, it's not mandatory, and a lot of times when you're thrown in as a freshman, you're like, oh my gosh, I need help. <laughs> I need help all throughout school, and as an adult, I feel like we're really afraid to ask for help. So, this is something that should definitely change. And to help with that change, we should make mandatory advising schedules. This would take the place of your time ticket and would last an hour. So, instead of waiting until 8 a.m. when your time ticket opens to sit in front of your computer, you're going to an advising meeting at 8 a.m. in the morning to meet with an actual advisor who's going to sit you down and talk with you about all these options that you have if you don't like your major and all these options you have if a class is filled up. There's so many options out there, there's no reason to be stressed, and this is someone face-to-face -face who can calm you down, relax you, I mean, this is their job. They're getting paid to advise. Right now, it's only optional to go to them, and it should be mandatory. So, this would also excuse you from class. So let's say you've got a class that starts at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday. Well, your time ticket or your now scheduled advising meeting starts at that time. You would get permission to leave your class. I know for some of us that can be pretty fun. You're like, yay, no class. But it's actually super helpful to take a little extra time to think about what next year is going to bring for that hour if it lasts that long, or for maybe 30 minutes if you're just like, I'm here to schedule. It's not a big deal. You know, that would be so much easier than sitting in front of a screen for two weeks and being like, can't wait till it opens. What am I going to take? Here's like all the scheduling plans that I have. Oh no, this class is filled. You know, way too much work. Let's let someone like a professional handle. And so, for those people who say, you're adults, do it yourself, I have this chart to bring you. You know, when you think about adults as just, I mean, when you're young, you're like, well, when I'm 18, I'm an adult. But then you hear a lot of adults saying to you, well, you're not really a fully adult yet. You have to go through the process of being an adult. You know, it's a step-by-step -step process of becoming what we are today. Well, in this chart, we can see that more than 75% of high school graduate students travel between 500 miles to 2,000 miles away from home to go for college. So becoming an incoming freshman and continuing on in this journey of like becoming who you are, it can be kind of difficult to understand what it's like to... <laughs> it can be hard to understand how to maneuver around the process of class registration. I mean, you're already being thrown in to being like, how do I do my laundry? You know, how can I become fully responsible and self-sufficient for myself. You know, no wonder we're all stressed out because we're thrown into this process of like, here's what high schoolers are, here's what adults are, here's where you are, and we're just throwing everything at you. That can be really difficult. Like, it's very stressful. So instead of having that, we should have mandatory advising schedules. So let's take one thing at a time, baby steps to becoming an adult, And let's make mandatory advising sessions happen. Thank you. Ooh. Okay. The only thing I can, like, I mean, you did really well with, like, the placements and everything, moving along. Like, you yeah. didn't really, like, pause as much or anything like that. I mean, like, yeah, it was some things, like, whatever. Yeah. But um, one thing I would say to do is kind of, you say the word so a lot. You kind of go, so time. So yeah, time is this. Okay. So then going to energy. So energy. Like it kind of
kind of seems almost repetitive a little bit, but, and then it kind of like, I don't know, when I notice like a speaker like doing like a certain hand gesture or something a lot, then it's like you're kind of focused on that. And then if like they keep saying a certain word a lot, like they just kind of more focus on that, like, and then it kind of draws them away. So just like maybe change up your word variation a little oh, bit, yeah. go like, hence this, um, or therefore this, or so instead like, of saying, um, I say so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, the worst than um. Um, but, or even just like take a breath and then let you and also your audience kind of like take a step back, readjust, know like, okay, this is a new topic. So, because anytime you do say so, you're kind of, you going into like a new like topic or subtopic or whatever else. So okay. just, yeah, <laughs> um, just, um, take like a breath or, uh use a different word. It's so but, hard because you don't yeah. even think about it and then you're up there and you're nervous and you try to pretend like you're not but it's like your body knows and your mouth knows but your brain's like stop it. Yeah. And you're like so uh yeah. So uh yeah. I uh, know I have a problem with that. I'm like um yeah. So <laughs> yeah. And then Colton whenever I see him use his hands just he does it a lot with his hand gestures. He'll do this a lot. Yeah. And I'm like, stop with the hand gestures. Or stop with, or I heard like somebody in the other class, they, they kept saying, um. Mm-hmm. So they'll just be like, um, um, or when I hear people say like all the time, they're like, um, well, like, uh, like, uh. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, everyone does it, but just try. It's so and, weird to think about yeah. you doing it too. You're like, uh-huh. oh, I do it too. Uh-huh. Stop. <laughs> yeah. So just, um, if you, like, be aware of like what you're saying, obviously. And if you feel like, if you're about to say, just go, and like, just kind of like take a breath and then energy. <laughs> energy is this. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my but goodness. other than that, you're doing really well. I mean, I think you were on time. Yeah. You're, yeah. Because you're going to add that. almost nine minutes. Yeah. Because you're going to add that other little excerpt too. So that's probably going to be like 30 to 45 seconds per minute. Somewhere yeah. in there. Um, it's weird that I have, like, so many things to talk about. Like, I feel like 10 minutes isn't enough time. Yeah. And it's weird, because I had so much more information I wanted to talk about with statistics. I was going to be like, well, five, 58% um, stay within the 100 mm-hmm. miles, which is about a two-hour drive. Like, yeah. who wants to drive two hours? Yeah, for that, I would just kind of include, like, the most fascinating statistic to you, because when you overwhelm, like, your audience with st- statistics, it's like, okay, we get it. Like, yeah. get what you're saying done like I don't really care about anything about the statistics so yeah just kind of pick like one or two of like the most important ones to you or the ones that fit the most in with this um with the topic but yeah no it's it's really good um yeah it's just (laughs) yeah I think once you like practice it more and then also like I mean practice it like very very like animated I guess kind of like really like you, like when you're by yourself or whatever, just kind of like. I mean, I don't. I forget what your opening statement was, but like um, questions. Yeah. Who's had trouble scheduling? Who's had trouble scheduling yeah. the classes? <laughs> so just practice like really animated by yourself, because I mean, once you get into like the like real setting, you're not going to be as animated. And so like, I kind of feel like if you practice it like extremely animated, and then you go up there, and then you're just like kind of tone it down a little bit because you're nervous obviously with the speech like yeah. I think that's going to really help you to like make an opening statement to your audience and like make them really pay attention and also follow your story along with you okay so, yeah just kind of like talk like how you're talking like normally but like act like super ecstatic about it or be like oh well this is like super annoying because like who wants to do that like Kind of like do it like you're selling the speech, kind of. So okay. yeah, but other than that, you're doing like really well with time, and then your slides are really well put together too. Like it's not like super busy. Yeah. And then like the one with the Kaylee, which yeah, I forget how to say her name, but like hey, that's like Coco or something Kyoko, like that. Kyoko. Kyoko. Yeah. Um, but like that helps your audience to kind of like take a breather and be like, okay, yeah, like I get it. Like stress, like yeah. So, oh my god, I need help. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm hoping it'll get a couple of laughs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, like, that'll also, like, since that is kind of later in your uh, speech, like, that's kind of like, okay, like, add something in there to, like, connect with you again. Mm-hmm. And, like, kind of really, like, keep them interested in what you're saying. But, yeah. How much time is on What does it say? Um, 14 minutes. 14 plus the 20. 
is 34. Oh so we're at 35 God. minutes. We need 20 more minutes yes. of this. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I can run it again. That'll give us 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Especially since it's like touch screen, it's like there's no. Yeah, this whole side works for touch screen. This whole side doesn't because the crack. It's yeah, like a big. I can like kind of see it. Though. It's like a hair, and mm -hmm. I literally thought it was a hair, and I was like sitting here doing homework one time, and I kept rubbing it. I was like, why is it not going away? <laughs> and then I realized that it goes all the way up to the camera, and I thought my camera didn't work anymore. It does, thank God. <laughs> but yeah, and then I asked my friend, and I was like, maybe I can just go get the screen replaced, and she said that when she went to go get hers, and she had an old computer. Too. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like a new kind like this. She was like, it's like seven hundred dollars, and they were like, you might as well buy a new computer. Like, and I was like, oh shit, I can I can last the rest of the semester. Oh, yeah, no, for real. Are you timing? Yes. Yes, I'll tell you. And then if I stop, then just, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to think about how I want to approach this. Ooh. Hi. Who's here has had trouble? Sorry. Can we start over? <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. think I want to start off with hi. Mm -hmm. I was like, hi. <laughs> I don't even know how to start off. Should I just walk right up and um, be like, so who here has had trouble? Or should I actually? I would walk up and say, like, should I say my topic or should I wait? I would wait maybe and then kind of like go up and be like, what were you, stress, time, energy, right? Yeah. Stress, time, stress, and energy. Yep. Okay. So do just go up and say time, stress, and energy. These are all things that go into scheduling for classes for your next semester. How many of you have had trouble and then like go into that? Because I feel like your time, stress, and energy are kind of like your like three main points in this. And then, or like I that's like, like your too. like kind it's of not like, giving away my whole yeah. Idea. It's kind of like oh, what's she gonna talk about now? Like kind of like keep them guessing. And then especially when you touch on it again, then it's kind of like connecting it all back. If that like kind of makes sense. Yeah, it does. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I'll start off with that. Time, stress, and energy. Going into class scheduling, these are all the main things that go along with it. Who here has had a lot, who here has had trouble scheduling while they've been in college? Okay, now who of you who have raised your hands have had trouble, let alone this semester? Yeah, I relate to that. Me too. It's stressful. It is the class registration Struggle. <laughs> so, I said so. <laughs> You're good. This semester, I really struggled with class registration. My time to get open at a certain time, I wasn't fully prepared on what I needed to know, what classes what to get, and let alone, I didn't get permission for most of my classes. So, I had to wait a while and get it later. <laughs> we keep saying so. Nice. Okay. Yeah, practice. I mean, like, you're good to say it occasionally. If you say it too much, I'll stop you. Okay. And just be like, eh. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Let alone this semester, I've had trouble myself with class registration. I didn't have my time to get open at a certain time that I needed it to, and I felt like when I wanted it, because I was going to be a senior. Not only that, but it's gotten in the way of classes, it's gotten in the way of studying, it's taken a lot of time, energy, and stress on my mind just thinking about it. So, let's start with the issues. One of these main issues, like I mentioned before, is time. Time is at the so essence. Sure like, go like the one, two, three. Yeah. No, you're good. Time. <laughs> time is of the essence for college students. We're constantly moving around, focusing on a bunch of different things. 
we have to think about the time we're spending in class, the time we're spending on projects, the time we're meeting with people to work on projects, and the time that we aren't focusing on school and we're instead focusing on friends and family and enjoying our downtime for once. Time is at the essence. So we don't want to waste our time thinking about okay, well, my time ticket opens in two weeks at this time, but I have class at that time, so what am I going to do? Am I going to sit in class and schedule everything out, or am I going to um, miss class and then come back later and tell them I'm really sorry I missed, and what if they don't allow me to miss? What if I miss points? It's a lot of wasted time on our minds thinking about something that shouldn't be as thought out for our own brains. We have to think about so much already, so it's a big waste of time. Second thing. Stress. Stress comes along with college just like anything in life. It can be very stressful when you have to think about all the extra stuff that we have to do in college, let alone our actual life. You know, we have to think about what we're adding to our workload along with the class registration. And it can be really frustrating when your times don't match up the same days that need to match up and you're not getting as many credit hours as you think you need. It can be very stressful and really frustrating. It can also be really scary when you're thinking about major and minor classes. If you're a freshman thinking about maybe switching your major, when you're a first semester freshman, you get help with that. You know, you sit down with a person and they help you out and they decide, okay, what are your interests? But when you're a junior thinking about, well, maybe this is not what I want to do and I want to start completely over, you have the option to go to an advisor, but it's not mandatory like it should be. And a lot of us don't want to ask for help because we feel like we're adults and that's not really what adults do sometimes. They really rely on themselves. So that can be a lot of stress, which leads to overthinking, which can lead to panic. And panic shouldn't come along with class registration. So the last thing I want to discuss with you is energy. We already have to spend a lot of energy balancing classes, tests, projects, extracurricular activities, and then possibly a job. On top of everything else that life comes and throws at you, maybe you're sick. You know, you don't have a lot of energies with that. <laughs> um, you also want to place a lot of this energy, because this comes at the worst time that it should, placing all this energy instead on finals. You know, what is my final project? What is my final group presentation? You know, for, especially... <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want to waste our energy putting all this thought into something that shouldn't be a big deal. And also it's creating a lot of negative energy that college students are already feeling at this time that shouldn't cause a lot of negative energy. Now I'm going to talk to you about a little blurb about why it is the way it is. But before I can talk about that, let's move on to what can we do. So what can we do? I don't know. <laughs> Let me take you back. You're a freshman. You've just made it through your first semester. It's the time in your life where you're kind of freaking out. You're like, this is my first final. I'm about to go take my first finals week, my first dead week, and it moves on, and it moves on. But you remember, oh my gosh, I need a schedule for the next semester. Well, it's a good thing that you have a handy dandy advisor that will help you through that, because we no longer have that when you move on. Second semester comes around, you no longer have that advisor anymore. You're expected to be able to pick out your classes and Pick out your minor by yourself and think about all these extra things that come in with scheduling. And it's stressful, it's scary, and it's a waste of time and it's a waste of energy. So, what do I have to say about that? Mandatory advising scheduling. We need to extend advisor help through all our years, whether you're a junior going into your senior year or you're a senior finishing out their last semester, or you're getting your, getting your master's degree. No matter what school you are, we should extend all this advisor help to all of the students and make it mandatory in each department. It would be a lot helpful to have a professional who gets paid to understand how students think and how organization works. You know, when we're already having to think about so many other things, we should allow someone who's getting paid to do this help us out. Right now, it's only optional. I feel like it should be mandatory. Because if it's mandatory, then we're actually going to go. We're actually going to listen to what they have to say. And we're actually going to put a lot of thought into what we're taking, which might help us enjoy what classes we're taking. 
there's so many times I hear people who are like, oh, I hate this class, I shouldn't have taken it, like it was, it was an option, I could have picked this out, you know. Let's sit down with someone who's actually taking an interest in you and who's like, okay, this is what you like, well, here's different classes that you might like, but you might not like this one, or this one's full, so let's put you in this one instead. Instead of you figuring out by yourself, later on dropping your class to pick up another class, or the whole thing itself, let's just sit down with someone and have mandatory advising scheduling. For those of you who say, we're adults, why don't we just do this ourselves? It's what's meant to be, it's what's meant to be, right? I'm here to show you the statistic. As you can see, more than 75% of high school graduates travel from 500 to 2,000 miles away from home. Now let me tell you, 100 miles in itself re relates to two hours of driving time. If you're a high school graduate, you might not know how to do your laundry might not know how to be fully self-efficient yourself. And now we're being thrown into this big pool of things that we don't know and people we don't know at a place that we don't know and having to be fully self-sufficient, responsible, and independent. No wonder we're all stressed out. You know, we're not getting that time that we need and baby steps that we need to move into from the high school to being an adult. When we talk to adults about becoming an adult, they say it's a process. It's a live and learn process. It's a fail and succeed process. So we need to take these steps one at a time. And while we're taking those things one at a time, we don't need to be thinking about class registration when there's already someone there that really could help us. So let's make mandatory advising scheduling happen because nobody deserves to be stressed out or freaked out when something's not that big a deal. Thank you. That was really good. <sighs> and you were right at 840-ish? Um, well, I mean, other than me stopping you, so yeah, you're probably like at 8.30, but then you're going to include the thingy. <laughs> yeah, the other thing, so yeah, you're good with time. Yay! Um, yeah, you did really well with not saying so as much, and I think because I was catching myself, and I was like, oh my god, and then I said, so, let's make <laughs> mandatory advice if you have to go. Um, and I think, like, when you were, like, kind of more aware, like, you were saying so, like, you took deep, like, you took a breath, and, like, it flowed better to me. Good. And yeah, so it was. I felt like that I, was really good. I feel like I included a lot more mm -hmm. personal stories yeah. too, or like really, I felt more down to earth when I was saying mm -hmm. because I was focused on like not saying so. So yeah. I was taking a deep breath and I'd be like, instead of saying so, I have to say like, let's move on to this or mm -hmm. another thing to go along with this would yeah. be this. And yeah, and like that definitely helps your audience like stay interested because like nine minutes is like. Pretty decent time, like especially when you're talking about the same thing over and over yeah. again, and it's just class mm -hmm. registration. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah, I just said that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, you're doing really well. Uh, that last time was really, really good. Um, yeah, so, I think we're good. Almost 30 minutes, and then we had what 20 minutes from that, so that's 50 minutes. Yeah. Or do you think you just want to cut it off? We can just cut it off. Thank you. <laughs>